Counselor Troy is not my favorite Star Trek character. I'll get into some of the specific reasons why in a minute, but generally speaking, it's because the writers of Star Trek The Next Generation never really figured out what to do with her. For my money, one of the most damaging things they ever did to her was to introduce a way more interesting character who showed herself to be far better qualified to fill Troy's role on the Enterprise than Troy was. You know who I'm talking about already because you've seen the title of this video, which is why Guinan should actually have Counselor Troy's job. One of the quirks of my own Star Trek fandom that I've learned to share less often and tried to express more thoughtfully when I do share it is my antipathy toward the character of Deanna Troy. There are a few reasons for this. One is that, unfortunately, the Trek fanbase has its share of sexist assholes who will take any opportunity, however unwittingly offered, to vomit their hatred and resentment of women all over me, each other, and everyone else in the vicinity. Troy is the most useless character in the franchise. The only thing she's good for is getting my dick hard. She's not even that hot. Take your macho shithead circle jerk somewhere else, fellas. I might not think Troy is a very good character, but that doesn't mean I want to watch you project all your insecurities and failures onto her, especially not in my comment section, so hit the bricks. Another reason is, a lot of my fellow Trek fans, including some of you, no doubt, like Deanna Troy, like Marina Sirtis, the actor who plays her, and by the way, who wouldn't like Marina Sirtis? She's awesome. And the last thing I want to do is to make someone feel disrespected just because they like something innocuous I don't happen to dig. Even I have to admit, Troy has some admirable qualities. Empathy, patience. In certain ways, she's not a bad role model, so no disrespect. No reason we can't be friends. More power to you if you love Counselor Troy. Having said that, I think she's terrible at her job and someone else should have it. Someone like the ship's bartender. The best way to handle this is probably to break it down and examine each of Counselor Troy's responsibilities aboard the Enterprise, how she does or doesn't fulfill them, and how Guinan demonstrates she would do a better job. So let's do that. The duty we see Counselor Troy performing most often is advising Captain Picard on the bridge during tactical situations. Because Deanna is half Betazoid, she has a psychic awareness of other people's emotions. This gives Picard an obvious advantage in almost any confrontation with an adversary. Troy is always right there next to him on the bridge, able to give him valuable insights into the state of mind of the person on the view screen. Or at least that's the idea. In practice, Troy's insights usually go something like this. He's hiding something, Captain. He's not as confident as he appears, Captain. Captain, there's something he's not telling us. I don't sense anything. I don't sense anything. He's holding something back. I mean, change her last name to Obvious and give her command of her own ship. Am I right? Because Captain Ob... Never mind. Troy rarely justifies her constant presence on the bridge by providing useful information, but how do we know Guinan would do a better job? Well, for one thing, there are a few examples from throughout the series of Guinan doing a better job. Remember Q Who from Season 2? Of course you do! It's the first appearance of the Borg, and while Troy's insight into this deadly new enemy consists of sensing that all Borg are part of the same mind, Guinan's over here backing up a dump truck into the observation lounge, hanging out the window like, Jean-Luc, where do you want this exposition? She fills the crew in on who the Borg are, how they operate, how dangerous they are, and tells Picard and the others straight out, I know you like to do the exploration of Discovery thing, but you need to drop everything and run away right now because these cyber zombies don't want to talk to you, they want to kill you. Picard ignores this advice and the Borg almost kill everyone. Doing as Guinan suggested might not have made that much of a difference in the long run if the Enterprise had immediately turned back after arriving in the remote area of space to which Q had sent them. The Borg ship may have decided to chase them down and try to kill them anyway. But the point is Guinan was right. She had information that was pertinent to the situation and Troy didn't. Guinan also seems to know more about Q than anyone else on the ship. It never really goes anywhere beyond Guinan and Q constantly throwing shade at each other, but I'm okay with that. 
This comparison might be unfair to Troy because Guinan's superior counsel regarding the Borg is a product not of her skills, but of her experience. Guinan knows about the Borg because the Borg invaded her homeworld and destroyed her civilization. If the Borg had invaded Beta Zed, Troy would have been able to tell Picard all that important stuff he immediately brushed off in order to endanger the lives of everyone on the ship. So let's look at another time Guinan gave Picard better tactical advice than he ever got from Troy. In the episode Yesterday's Enterprise, the timeline is temporarily altered by the sudden appearance of the Enterprise C, a ship that was lost and presumed destroyed 20 years ago. After the Enterprise C emerges from a temporal rift, the Enterprise D transforms from a ship of exploration to a battleship, and the Federation is at war with the Klingon Empire. The changes are imperceptible to the crew. As far as they know, nothing is any different. Only Guinan senses that there is something wrong. She says so to Picard and eventually convinces him to send the Enterprise-C back through the rift, even though it would mean certain death for the crew. The Enterprise-C does return to the past, and the timeline is restored to its former state. Thanks, Guinan! And everyone else who helped? Especially Tasha. Thanks, Tasha. Good to see you. Sorry about your horrible life. This, I feel compelled to acknowledge, might not be a fair comparison either, because Troy isn't even present for most of the Yesterday's Enterprise episode. She vanishes when the Enterprise C shows up and the timeline shifts, so we don't know what advice she might have given Picard in the alternate timeline or how useful it may have been. Though I do want to point out that Troy's absence in the alternate timeline is presumably due to the fact that the Enterprise's mission is explicitly militaristic, which implies that Troy's presence on the ship adds no tactical value, which is actually my whole point for this part. Thank you very much. The next duty performed by Counselor Troy I want to examine is her role as Captain Picard's personal advisor. Besides being on the bridge to offer insight during missions, Troy is also someone we see Picard confiding in from time to time, asking for guidance. My dislike for the character of Troy aside, I must concede that she is shown to be way better at this aspect of her job than the tactical advisory bit. It's not that we ever see her giving Picard particularly great advice, but it is obvious from their scenes together that Picard trusts her and puts a certain amount of stock in her opinion. And I don't recall Troy ever giving him flat-out bad advice. It's not as if there's a scene where Picard is like, Counselor, I'm thinking of getting a bunch of grapes tattooed on my face. And Troy is like, that's a great idea, do that. Her counsel is unremarkable, but solid. But come on, who are we kidding? Guinan wins this round too. She's one of Picard's oldest and closest friends. When he comes to her for advice, it's usually because he's really struggling with something. Picard doesn't seek out Guinan for, is my speech to the archaeology council any good problems? More like, how do I convince a judge that Data should have civil rights problems? Guinan also knows Picard well enough, and is confident enough in their friendship, to offer her counsel to Picard whether he asks for it or not. Two of the best scenes between Picard and Guinan occur in the episode I, Borg, where Picard allows an away team to bring an injured Borg drone aboard the Enterprise to nurse him back to health, and eventually to transform him into an unwitting weapon against the other Borg. Initially, Guinan is against allowing the Borg on the ship. She argues forcefully that even a single injured Borg who doesn't seem to present a threat could be dangerous. But after she meets with the Borg, who as we all know takes the name Hugh, and sees that he has become an individual with a will of his own outside the Borg Collective, she returns to Picard and argues that it's wrong to use him to destroy his own people, and that his rights as a person should be respected. Guinan's effectiveness as Picard's counselor is, in large part, a product of their close friendship, but she brings something else to the table that Troy doesn't, and that is moral authority. Guinan's been places. Guinan's seen some shit. She's far older than the rest of the crew, she's familiar with a larger area of the galaxy, and she, more than anyone else on the Enterprise, speaks to Picard not in terms of strategy or personal interests, but right and wrong. Morality is a shared language between Guinan and Picard. Troy seems like a good person and a caring friend, but when Picard is struggling over a difficult decision, when he's not sure what the right thing to do is, his wisest counsel doesn't come from Troy. It comes from Guinan. 
The last facet of Troy's job I want to discuss is her role as ship's counselor. She's basically the mental health equivalent of Dr. Crusher. Given how large the crew of the Enterprise is and how stressful its adventures often are, this is presumably the area of her duties that takes up the most of Troy's time. Unfortunately, from what we see depicted on the show, it's also the thing she's the worst at. Look at how hilariously ineffective her counseling sessions with Lieutenant Barkley are. In the first, during the episode Hollow Pursuits, she tries to get the obviously nervous Barkley to relax, but everything she tries to make him more comfortable only increases his anxiety. Within a couple of minutes, he's fleeing her office in a panic. That's not all Troy's fault. Barkley would be a challenging case for any therapist, and his anxiety issues are amplified by his attraction to Deanna. She is the subject of some of his favorite holodeck programs, remember? Even so, can she not see how badly Barkley is reacting to what she's doing? It's obvious to me, and I'm not even a half-betazoid empath. A later session shown in the episode Realm of Fear goes a little better, but even here, Troy's attempts to help Barkley are pretty basic. He comes in for help with his fear of using the transporter, and she's like, have you tried diddling yourself behind the ear? It feels really good. And okay, credit where credit is due, that does seem to make Barkley feel better, though its effects are short-lived. By the time he makes it to the transporter room, his anxiety has reasserted itself, but he does go through with the transport, so point to Troy. When I look back across the whole series of Star Trek The Next Generation, it's not so much that I see Troy being an actively bad therapist, with the exceptions of the scenes with Barkley I just referred to, which were presented as comedy, to be fair. I can't think of a time when she seemed dangerously incompetent. She never does any real harm, as far as I can tell. The problem is she doesn't seem like an actual therapist. She seems like an uninformed writer's conception of a therapist. Looking at things from that angle might also help to explain why Guinan is so much better at this part of Troy's job, too. Because she totally is. Sorry, Deanna. You're 0 for 3. Hey, hey! The solution to your problems is not at the bottom of a whiskey glass. Unless there's, like, a flash drive containing the script for a really great unproduced Counselor Troy episode down there. Is there? Guinan is the ship's bartender, and bartenders aren't professional therapists. That means when writing Guinan, the writers of Star Trek The Next Generation didn't have to write her as a quote-unquote therapist. They just wrote her as an observant, insightful person. Guinan doesn't have a degree in psychiatry. Her vague capacity to perceive reality at a somewhat deeper level than others can aside, her only special ability is that she's a good listener. And that's what makes Guinan such a good counselor. She listens. Most of the time, she doesn't even have to tell people what to do. She enables them to figure out what they should do for themselves. When Picard is struggling with how to establish that Starfleet should protect Data's civil rights in the episode The Measure of a Man, Guinan doesn't come right out and say, just draw a comparison to slavery. She refers to the existence of disposable people throughout the histories of many cultures, and how easy it was for everyone else to exploit them without considering their welfare. She trusts that Picard is smart enough to get to slavery from there by himself, which he does, and he wins! In your face, Maddox! When Geordi is bummed because the real Dr. Leah Brahms is visiting the Enterprise and she's not into him like the holographic version of her was, Guinan doesn't tell him to grow up and stop being such an entitled, self-pitying, creepy shithead. She says maybe you were disappointed because you were looking at her through your other visor, the one that only shows you what you want to see. And Geordi gets it. It takes him a minute, but he gets it. Even when Guinan is a little more direct in her advice, she always gets right to the heart of the matter. In the second half of The Best of Both Worlds, she visits Riker to convince him that he can't defeat the Borg unless he's willing to kill the assimilated Captain Picard. Picard and I are closer than friendship or family, she tells Riker. I'm willing to let him go. You've got to let him go, too. Of course, Riker ultimately wins by doing the exact opposite of letting Picard go, but whatever, it will still sound advice, right? <laughs> also, Guinan is compelled to visit Riker in the first place because she's noticed that morale on the ship has been incredibly low since Picard was abducted by the Borg, which seems like it should be Troy's job, but Guinan just does it. She can't help it. She's just so much better at it. 
She's so much better at it that in The Loss, the episode where Troy temporarily loses her empathic abilities and considers resigning from her post, Guinan out counsels the counselor. She talks to Deanna for a few minutes in 10 Forward, and by pretending that she is interested in taking over as ship's counselor herself, Guinan shows Deanna that her empathic abilities aren't her only valuable qualities and that she could continue to serve as counselor without them. In doing so, Guinan demonstrates yet again how much better she is at Troy's job than Troy is right in Troy's face. Here's the thing, Star Trek The Next Generation is a great show, but it is not a perfect show. One of the most glaring imperfections of the show is how poorly the writers handled the character of Deanna Troy. Not only is she usually shown to be useless on the bridge and just kinda okay at best at the other parts of her job, she's also the go-to cast member to play damsel in distress, or become possessed by a mysterious entity, or get uh, sexually assaulted, which happens a few times in the TV series and once more in the last of the TNG movies. For old time's sake, I guess. How could the writers be so bad at creating material for Troy and so good at creating material for Guinan, who was often serving a similar function on the Enterprise and in the story? One reason might be that wise bartender is a much more familiar and comfortable trope than caring and effective psychiatrist. I assume this is because, historically, most professional writers have a shittier relationship with their therapist than with the person who pours their booze. Another factor might be that Troy was a regular, while Guinan was a recurring character. The relative lack of exposure for Guinan helped, I'm sure. Guinan was also seen mostly in 10 Forward. She wasn't presented as a senior member of the crew, which meant there was no need to justify her constant presence on the bridge. We would see Guinan for a scene or two, she'd play a pivotal role in a handful of episodes per season, then go back to whatever she did off screen, which apparently did include phaser practice and did not include tennis. Guinan was important. She propelled the story forward. She helped other characters get to where they needed to be. Guinan was never just hanging around to recite a few lines of token dialogue. When she showed up, it mattered. Troy, on the other hand, was always there, but she rarely mattered. She said things that didn't need to be said. She interacted with other characters in ways that didn't show us anything new or interesting about her and didn't accomplish anything in terms of anyone else's character or the narrative of the episode or anything else other than just getting Troy into the show. Every character on the show got that treatment from time to time. There were even a few episodes where Captain Picard didn't really need to be there, but Troy was relegated to present but useless status way more often than any of the others, and her character suffered for it. We're told over and over that she's a great counselor and an essential member of the crew, but we're not shown that very often. When Troy is written in a way that displays her competence and she's given an important role to play in the story, it usually plays very well. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen very much. That's why a know-it-all dickhead like me can declare that Guinan should actually have Counselor Troy's job with such confidence. The creators who made all this stuff up mostly did right by Guinan. With a few exceptions, they didn't do right by Counselor Troy. So take it out on the writers, not on Troy herself, who doesn't really exist, or Marina Sirtis, who does exist and is a lovely human being, or Star Trek fans who hold a different view and think that Troy is actually a really great character, because nobody is right or wrong here. It's just a matter of taste. Better yet, don't take it out on anyone. Like what you like, and dislike what you dislike, and don't be a jerk about it. It's not as if the writers of Star Trek owe us anything for doing what some of us felt was a shitty job. I'm sure they tried their best. Not you. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of Trek Actually. I'm about to tell you what the subject of the next episode of Trek Actually is going to be, but first I want to give shout outs to some of my newest Patreon patrons, and they are Dave Weston, thank you Dave, School of Hard Thoughts, thank you School of Hard Thoughts, Rudiger Ludwig, thank you Rudiger, Neil Payne, thank you Neil, Thomas Dinsdale Young, thank you Thomas, 
Aaron O'Connell, thank you, Aaron, and Louis Tuhey, thank you, Louis. Thanks to everybody who is pledging to support me on Patreon. If you like these videos, especially if you dig the Star Trek videos and you want to help me continue making these videos, you can support me in doing so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Steve Shives. You can uh, donate any dollar amount a month that you can afford and that you think I'm worth. Five dollars a month or more gets you a shout out at the end of a Trek Actually video. So please consider supporting me on Patreon if you dig these videos and if you are not a Patreon supporter yet. Also, becoming a Patreon supporter lets you vote in the poll to choose the next Trek Actually topic. So there's an extra little bonus for you, a little enticement, if you will. Uh, before I tell you the next topic, I want to remind you that in addition to doing the YouTube stuff, I am also the co-host of a Star Trek-themed comedy podcast called The Ensign's Log, which I co-host with the brilliant Jason Harding. We play characters. We are portraying low-ranking officers serving aboard a certain famous Federation starship that is embarking on a certain legendary five-year mission. I think you follow where I'm going there. You can listen to the Ensign's Log at lemmelistenpodcasts.com or you can subscribe via RSS. The link is in the description box of this video. And I have some special Ensign's Log related news to share with you this time, this Friday. February 15th, beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern time, that's 4 p.m. Pacific time, and whatever time that is, wherever you live, Jason and I will be together streaming live on this channel to take your questions about the Ensign's Log. We're doing a live Ensign's Log Q&A stream here on this YouTube channel. So the link to watch that is in the description of this video. Check it out Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is for you. Come join us, watch, join us in the live chat, bring your Ensign's Log related questions because me and Jason are gonna be hanging out for a while and taking your questions about the Ensign's Log. It should be a ton of fun. The Ensign's Log live stream Q&A. Come check it out Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Hope to see a bunch of you there. And now, the topic for next month's Trek Actually video. This is the winning topic of the Patreon poll that decides the topics for Trek Actually videos every month from now on that you can participate in if you are a patron at any level at patreon.com slash Steve Shives. The subject of the next Trek Actually video, as chosen by my patrons, is who is actually Star Trek's most reckless time traveler? A time travel episode of Trek Actually is next. That's coming up next month. Hope to see you then. Hope to see you on uh, the videos in between now and then. But the next proper Trek Actually video is going up about a month from now. And that is the subject. Who is actually Star Trek's most reckless time traveler? Should be a lot of fun. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.